Here we are. We are live with the Rare Network podcast, episode 14. We've got Bone, Greg Morgan in the house with us from Bone Pool. We're going to talk, you know, everything Cardano. We're going to talk a lot of racing and NASCAR today. Uh, this is going to be a really good one. Welcome, Greg. Thanks for coming out. All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate you having me. I'm a rookie at podcast, so go easy. <laughs> We're going to make it real easy, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Let's, like, kick it off with uh, a little bit about yourself. Like, what's your background? I know we talked a little bit before we got started here. You were interested in engineering, and how'd you get into, you know, cryptocurrency and Cardano, and then how'd you get into racing and, and cars and things? Uh, the crypto thing, uh, really, it was uh, gambling with Bitcoin, like in, like, a uh, poker houses, you know, like trying to, you know, you know, win, you know, the WSOC bracelet kind of a thing, you know, like not that we ever sat in one or did it, but we were thinking we were going to go do something like that. And so we got to glimpse Bitcoin at that point, but we didn't understand wallets. And we didn't know how to hold it. And so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of, you know, but um, missing that window fueled the fire, you know, like by the time we get to 2017, the end of 2016, I guess. And it's like, Okay, we missed that, you know, but like, holy crap, here's this cool, you know, uh, technology, like, let's see how it works. And then and not long after, like, you know, Cardano launches and it's like, okay, well, this one up to them. So let's go, you know, deeper and deeper and deeper. And I, I haven't let up since then on, on that. So that's, that's kind of the really quick how I got from, you know, into crypto and in Cardano and then just, okay, this is the best one. That's funny. I, I did the same, um, like started off as a poker player and after Black Friday, when they shut down online poker in America, I used crypto to play on like America's card room and a few other sites. Like that's how I learned about uh, yeah. Bitcoin and stuff. So funny that we, we were using similar... Paxful. It was like you get a credit card, you could go to Paxful and you could send like we paid like an eight dollar service charge to send like a ten dollar Bitcoin. And like you know, <laughs> today, it's crazy to talk about it because it's so much money. But like, you know, well, that's that's yeah. how it goes. Is what it is. We all we all did it. That's how we learned, you know. How did you get into racing? Like, what's your background there? How did you get into that? Well, my dad was um, a pit stopper in the 80s. Uh, so he worked on the Valvoline car in the 27 car. Um, uh, Benny Parsons and Cale Yarbrough, the, the celebrities, the drivers that were in it then. Um, so, but I'd been a way little kid, just kind of getting to see the pictures on the wall and getting dragged to some of the races that we could go to, but not old enough to participate in any way. Um, so then years later when you're you know getting into your teens and you're getting that itch and my brother and one of his friends had a car and i started going along as as just younger brother tagging along and then um you know uh the fabrication i think is is what really drew me into it you know i think you know obviously we talk about tinkering and engineering and things like you know, that's obviously the interesting part but um i like to draw and stuff so uh the the welder kind of took to the welder pretty easy you know and and so i just got sucked in by creating things or making things that you know like oh cool here's just another another medium you know instead of pencils and paper it was metal and fire you know <laughs> so <laughs> that that's really cool um i didn't know that like welding so you guys like do you guys actually manufacture these cars or are you using like older cars i know you kind of said like no. using older model cars like you build them from the ground up how does it work yeah, I I skipped over a lot of the streetcar style or streetcar based racing. Um, I I got into what was you know um, fully fabricated late models in the the early '90s would would have been what my brother and his buddy were doing. Um, so me getting that shoehorn into their world, I skipped over go karts and street stock and mini stock and all that stuff. I kind of had to go back and do it later. Um, but so. I was introduced to it to being fully fabricated that every that you know a car would be built you know out of the rack the steel rack you'd pull a 20 foot length of tubing and cut it all up and bend it until you had all the pieces to the car you know um so that's been, that was like the the end my you know what i was showing that early on and that was just figured that's the way you do it <laughs> and like what is the team you guys have built around and like what gave you the idea to kind of like include cardano and the bone pool and all that like where did the team you guys have now get started well uh the barnes family uh showed up uh through uh what we call a easy to call it a prep shop um a friend of mine had a business where he prepares the customer's car and then a fleet of customer cars 
and basically they pay to be able to just show up and jump in it and it's it's ready to rip and ready to go um so i was working there on and off <clears throat> and um the uh barnes family was just one of the customers you know that came there to have their cars prepared and as years went on and those kids progressed you know out of the smaller cars and into the bigger cars uh we just kind of kept with them um so it's <clears throat> they've been you know family by now you know it's it's almost 10 years that we've been going racing with them um so it was uh just a couple of years ago when um uh, we had an opportunity to to even get stickers on trent's car period basically and um and since you know we were already full bore into the the stake pool uh you know our best foot forward is to promote cardano and and the things that you could do on it because it seems like well that's going to you know propel the network further is going to be uh, all of the toys that we get to showcase or all the toys that we get to invent and, and see, you know, that, you know, come through. Um, so that was kind of the basis of it was if we blast Cardano all over it and we, and we give um, an, an, a way for smaller companies to show off what they have on Cardano, it might make sense to other people rather than there just being a random Chevrolet with you know random crypto sponsor it doesn't really you know tell a story or make sense or drag people in so we tried to use all of our years of motorsports and and um the, the marketing that you pull from all the motorsports and the years of, of seeing it on tv and trying to just you know blend it all in to give the best we could you know at the most affordable price that we could you know and like say racing is really expensive so that that you know even at the late model level it's just it's expensive for a small company to do the advertising so um this is and now i'm skipping ahead now this is where like the iRacing racing thing came up you know closer to the winter time we were winding down uh, of our season and races we had available and uh, another friend of mine from the uh from our racing community says hey i've got an esports team and you know let's let's start you know ramping up on that side because you know what are you going to do during the winter i guess we're advertising with you then you know so that's how that got there. And th that's how the whole esports side of thing kind of got Absolutely. started with yeah. with Hoskins and, and all that. And wow. lucky we had friends, you know, in the in the industry, the, like in the motorsport motorsports industry that I'd known for twenty years. And and again, that was gave it it, it really it made it really easy to do, you know, because it's a buddy of yours, you know, and it's like okay, man, like you you don't you weren't scared of, of screwing up because both of you were trying to figure it out. You know? When so, you're like a team like Trent and you guys like. How many cars do you have on the, like, on the, is it a bunch of different cars you have on the team? Like, you get to select, like, what car fits for the right, one car one on the car, team? Yeah, so, um, so in that, that level, uh, the Barnes family may own three cars that are running at one, you know, and there'll be a, a brand new car being built, and it's kind of the cycle of the cars. They, you know, they, they, they crash, and they twist, uh, and they wear out, and so you, you kind of, you know, I'll kind of always have one that's, a newer one you know in the in the eaves um so there's three cars that trent or his brother doug would drive and mostly trent stayed in one and his brother doug kind of got between the other two um and that's that's how and it wasn't always like that like most of the time in the early days it was just uh they each had one and you just had you know really keep up with it and if they wadded one up it was a lot of work to get it back the next week and then so having a second one that gave either of them a chance to just bolt their seat in it and say okay this is the one for this week while we take an extra week to get the car put back together you know right without thrashing or killing yourself or whatever yeah that's wild like and that it seems like you know these cars get damaged pretty often like there's all types of it's, fun that it's full contact i mean it's definitely <laughs> you know um they got fenders on them for a reason it's for rubbing them off you know like this uh, <laughs> like, like that seems to be the thing <laughs> How much like do one of these cars like cost? Like, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, yeah, right now, I mean, the prices like recently, you know, prices of steel and everything has just gone crazy. crazy. With you know, so right now it's it's a lot higher than it was. So you're going to be over a hundred thousand into one, you know, one hundred twenty into a late model. You know, by the time it's hits the track and you've got everything done <laughs> on it, you know. Um, oh my god! It's, uh, you can go further, wow. but, uh, you know. <laughs> that's wild and then like everybody's pushing the envelope because you want to win so you gotta 
trying to push right. the envelope as much as you can, you know. And there's a lot of rules that that keep it at at that bay, you know. I mean, like it would go on to three and four hundred thousand if you, if they start <laughs> getting rules out of the book, it would just you would just keep on going. And and other mm -hmm. series prove that if you go look at um, SCCA has TA one, and it's really uh, like pretty much unlimited. Like it's um, you've got to be so big, so wide, and four tires. You know, the, there like there aren't really many rules to it, so as much power as you can bring in that small box and as much body and as much tires you can bring as much uh, suspension design open, you know, like it's a wild race, but the problem is there's like nine of them, you know, they're hard. It's, it's so crazy and so expensive. Like there's just not enough of them to make it a big series. So it's exciting racing and it's cool to see because, you know, machines are, are awesome. They, you know, yeah. you got something over a thousand horsepower, you know, to the ground, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. That is pretty wild. I bet those are kind of fun to see for like the fanatics of the cars, like just to how far you can push the machines with today's technology probably gets pretty wild at this point. Yeah. I mean, and of course going on into, you know, we're, we're Neanderthals in comparison to um, a prototype team or a F1 team or LMP one or any of that kind of stuff. That's um, super engineering driven and super aero car and all that. I mean, the, the prices of those cars are in the millions, you know, like it's completely different stuff, you know, Whoa, like, that's wild. Yeah. How many cars are like in a race? Like, are there, buy I kind of, kind of leaning on my poker side again. Are there mm -hmm. like buy-ins and prize pools and stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, you can't buy in halfway through the race. That'd be kind of wild if somebody's in the pits and they're like, Hey, I want to get in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. So most events they'll, 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 uh, they'll make the the event public, and then you you fill out an entry blank, and uh, based on like the amount of people interested, they'll draw up a purse. And so if there's you know a hundred cars showing up, you know we can get pretty decent money to to go out and race. And like some of these purses are, uh, you know, fifteen thousand or you know ten thousand or you know five thousand or you know like, and it's enough money to that, that in reality it pays for the expenses of of going. It's you're really not even ahead after winning, you know, the expense of getting the, the cars to the track and tires on them and, and the labor to, to have make it all happen. It's, you know, you've spent that much money to, you know, to, to even go. go there. That so, makes a lot of sense. Like getting into the business of it, like that's, you know, that's wild. Like the purses normally cover just your travel and hotel and all that. And and of course, not, and not and all racing is like that. There's other races, like you know, like some dirt races, man, pay so much money, and they 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 race. Um, I mean, they might have like really expensive cars, but they're not tearing them up like we do. They're, they're not. They don't have the rules like we do that make it so crazy expensive. And really, a lot of times, the dirt racing is, would be more lucrative from a team stat standpoint of of trying to earn money as a team than it would be asphalt. I mean, asphalt is. To me, it's a science fair project, and you're out there chasing your dream of, you know, trying to get the cup or something. But um, okay. it's yeah, to me, it's it's more fun of trying to twist the knobs and see what makes it faster. And like, kind of staying within the bounds of the rules. Like, what are some of the rules they lay out for you guys to kind of keep keep everybody confined? Well, I mean, there's a whole book full of it. So um, pretty much, uh, they're going to measure the length of a of, of your suspension points you know, the, the height of your suspension points the length of your suspension arms um, they're going to measure the the height of your cage you know so you can't come with something that's really small and, and completely different you've got to adhere to specs along the way and specs will have tolerances and in those tolerances that's where we find the gray areas where they say okay well we'll give you a half inch of this we'll give you an inch variance on this and whether you you know uh, take push everything to make the back of the car higher or lower, whichever you're trying to do is kind of based on where you're going with it, what you're what rule you're trying to exploit. You know, if you're trying to, you know, max everything to one direction, it's all that's where the to me, that's the fun part. And then when they start taking that away, it's not near nowhere near as much fun, you know, to um, when you have to buy a part from Monopoly to bolt it onto the car and race it and you can't alter it or, or change it or build it yourself. Just not interested. It doesn't sound like fun. That but makes a lot of sense. Do like the tracks? Own. Do each track then like have like when you're on a racetrack, you go out kind of take some practice laps. Are you let then like tooling the car to the track? Yeah, or how does yeah, that work? Sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so 
every track you go to is going to have a different banking and a different like radius to the corner um, and then a different um, uh, grit to the, the pavement. So all of those things, you know, you're still throwing this 3000 pound blob off into the corner about 100 miles an hour. You've got the same problem every time, but around a different corner, you know, with, with a little bit of different attribute. So, yeah, you're like a recipe. You're going in there and you're twisting a little of this and a little of that to try to balance it out for what you're seeing. When one tire is getting hotter than all the others, well, then, OK, hey, here, you know, here's the red flag. Here's the problem. Take some of the load and weight off of this corner, you know, and uh, try to balance it out through the, the rest of the car. You know? So, yeah, that's that's been the, the, the game the whole time is um, who can show up and in a couple hours of practice tune their recipe to the track the best and then you know let's race and see who got it right you know because you're you also have the, the tires wear off the fuel the fuel wears out of the you know, um you're burning the fuel off and the weight is leaving the back of the car so your balance front to rear is changing as the weight's leaving so now you've got another problem that's dynamically moving as the race is wearing on that you've got to plan on and, you know, kind of lead into it ahead of time so there's a lot of, you know, like, I think this is enough, you know, there's a lot of that kind of guesswork going into it and you, you shake the dice, you know, you know, 20 different things. That is absolutely wild to think about all the like different variables that go into the race. Like as you're burning fuel, the back of the car is getting lighter. And to think about what that does is you're kicking out like the back end going around a corner, like, how many sets of tires do you go through? How many laps is a race and how many sets of tires do you go through? Well, and so for like, we're still talking about Trent's races with the Cardano car. Um, yeah. Most of the times it's just one. And um, uh, here recently, like the longer races, uh, they'll stop halfway and we'll put on a second set. Um, so we'll call it an eight tire race, but at times they'll throw strategy in there where they give us only two tires at the halfway. And then you kind of choose well, how do I want to use these tires? You know, like you, you've got a choice of where to put, where to put them on the car to maximize what you have, you know? So there's, there's some races that they're, they do throw a little strategy into it. You, um, you may, you may only be eligible for fueling the car or putting tires on during the pit stop. And, and you have to make that choice, whether you're going to do one or the other, and you're penalized if you do both. Um, so you, you make, so the, in that race, uh, the cars will stop three times and you get a chance all three times for either taking your fuel or taking your tires on either of the of the stops. So that those races are kind of fun because it, it plays a little bit more than just the, the follow the leader. But it's a little harder for the fans to watch. And I think this might be something that, you know, a, a use case for, you know, some of our 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 app developers, um, a way to kind of follow those races, a way to kind of know who's got what tire on the car or did they come in for their tires Have they got all their fuel have they you know how did much they gas get, you know, they have left yeah something like that you know but just like everyone's got a phone on them you know so like you yeah it's, you know how do we you know make that appear there and, and and people follow along with you know how we're doing yeah it reminds me of like the racing games i've played like you can tell the health of your tire it'll go from like green to red or right the fuel will go down like if you could see that while you're watching the race with every racer and be like, oh my God, he's in first, but I know he's got to take a gas stop where the yep. the guy in second can get a little further or something like that. That would that would uh, keep your attention. I right, think, a especially lot more short sure. attention span for everybody now. So, I mean, like, of course, you've got to have something like that. And, and, and TikTok's on the side, right? <laughs> What's it been like having, like, Cardano and Hosky and stuff on the car at races? Like, what are the conversations that come up from people that see the car and stuff well i mean it's still the general public so you're still what's cardano what's hosky <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's not like you've got people going oh my god that's the best cryptocurrency ever so you try to you know just answer it vaguely because you can't stand there and give somebody you know like an hour of dissertation on blockchain so yeah. you just try to you know use choice words kind of depending on how they came at you what they asked you what the you know what their feel is when they when they say it you kind of know what you're up against you know um so uh pretty much it's it's been good i mean like when we brought the mascot to martinsville that was an eye-opener for me is it was the first time that i heard people that were behind the dog saying 
I didn't realize they had a mascot. Wow. You know, like just things like that, you know, like people responding to it in a way that you could tell they, they knew about it. They knew what it was. And now they're making the connection with it, you know, like, Oh damn, I didn't. Cause I was still thinking nobody cares. Nobody knows, you know, like nobody has any idea, but he's got to look it up. You see the dog on the, on the hood. You, you gotta like figure out like, all right, what is this? Like, yeah, I, and, I, I and gotta I know. You know? I was I was responsible for that one. Um, the 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 putting it you know a five foot dog on the hood. Um, I I just I couldn't think of anything else to do with the Hosky sticker. You know, the only thing Hosky was mad about was that it was it was straight. Like when me and Drake put the thing on, we squared it all up and measured it all out and made sure it landed like you know dead on the money. And and he was like, it was his first comment is why is it square? Like why why wouldn't you put it offset and weird? You know, so. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, do you think you guys have onboarded a lot of people from that? Like, have you had people that have been like, man, I've definitely looked into crypto because of the car and looked into car. Yeah, there's there's I'd say a handful that of times that that's happened, you know, where you get somebody that's come up and, and they they'll talk to you again about it and telling. And now you can tell that they they continued their education. They continued to look into it. And it's like, ah, oh, man, that's the one. You know, that's that's what we were after, you know. But you know, very few. But you know, very few will say it or come up and these tell you if they if they are. Um, but it's yeah, it's definitely it's hard. I mean, like it's you know, you're probably up against a lot of TV things where you know people are you know being dragged down a road of negativity you know towards it, and then here you're trying to showcase you know governance and voting and and you know like and they're just it doesn't doesn't make any sense to them because they're still in the well, it's 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 fake it's money, right? Been freed phase, yeah. yeah. How how could yeah. It, how how could we vote with this if it's fake money? You know, like. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I know what you mean. Trying to onboard people is definitely tough. With the past like year or two of news, you know, mm -hmm. it's been uh, it's been rough. But now that we've gotten through like all the Sam Bankman freeds and the Celsiuses and stuff like that, hopefully yeah. people will kind of start to. Figure yeah. it out and a little more. Shout out to who Adam and and uh, and Vegas man with their poo cards. I mean, like that that changed a lot. Like that changed, like going from having to explain to somebody why we're going to hold to here. Here's your asset right out of the gate, yeah. and now you can then figure out whether you want to secure it or how to secure it. You know, because now you're kind of into it. You've seen it, and, and if it tickled you, then possibly you'll you'll want to go further. But while we're explaining in this analog of, of this you know crazy world that you got to be careful in, that's like a horrible way of going about the entry, you know. So kudos to Adam and Vegas for that one because like that's pretty. It makes I mean flipping that 180 made that the way, you know. Like that's just so much easier to you know explain. Absolutely. It. Are you guys like handing that out at show like at races and stuff? Yeah. Like What do you? Do you, do you guys do stuff beyond the car to like oh, yeah. onboard folks at the shows and stuff like that? Yeah, and that's um, at these at most of the races we go to, uh, weather permitting, they'll have what's called a fan walk, where all the cars go and park on the front stretch, and they do an hour where the where the fans come out of the stands and come kick the tires and talk to the drivers and the crew and all that kind of stuff. And this is where we were able to hand out plushies and hand out poo cards and hand out the Trent's T-shirts and stuff. You know, just you know, able to do a little bit more. And, um, and that's where we had most of the interactions with the, the gen pop, you know, people just mom and pop coming to ask what in the world is this? I see it go around the track, but what is it? You know? Um, and, and so, yeah, the poo cards definitely, uh, Hosky said he had a, a really great response to it. You know, people that actually went through the process of, you know, of downloading Vesper and then, you know, claiming the reward, you know, so, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to quote the percentage because I've, I've heard several different numbers, for, you know, claimed on that the percentages of, of what it was. But he was he was content with it that it was a successful mission, and and it was a big old box of them. You know, I I handed them out to several of the at Martinsville anyway. Um, several of the people that were on like the cleanup crew there, the you know the you know janitorial staff. I went up and greased them with them because like uh, those poor guys are, are cleaning up all our stickers that we're putting everywhere. You know, we've got Husky stickers in the bathroom on a concession stand, you know, and <laughs> tire carts, you know, it's on, on the back of a, you know, a bus. It, it like wherever we could slap stickers like D gens, you know, we were. So I was hoping those guys didn't mind. <laughs> I'm sure they're races? Races. Yeah, Oh yeah, absolutely. How many races a year do you guys go to? 
like throughout a season? Uh, the schedule would be about 20, um, but Trent's oh, wow. schedule was about five um, that he could make. And those were five races that were, that fit into his schedule because he works at the, his dad's paving company that is paying for all this, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so the, uh, those five races were flow racing, you know, live streams that we could do. Um, and, and, uh, and also piggybacked with his brother that was also trying to go because his brother was after a national title and, and came up really close, but like, you know, it's a hell of a run at it. Um, so a lot of the schedule was kind of based on those things and we just kind of had to, you know, wait for that schedule to be printed and then try to go after, you know, selling those dates, you know? So it's not the typical thing where we have, I mean, you know, uh, bull run permitting, you know, we can definitely do something like that where we know, you know, a year ahead of time that we're going to do these 20 races and everything's all laid out and, and, you know, which would be, you know, standard race team procedure things. But on these, we're kind of just doing it as, as we can. You know. That's really cool. You guys are like really just making it happen as you can and, and put it together and like it's it's been fun to watch like definitely it gets a lot of excitement online when you guys you know post a photo or a video of a race or something like that uh definitely you can feel the community get behind it so it's it's really cool awesome. what, what like when you got have, have you guys how often have you like won a race Trent has won one race and it was Dominion and it wasn't televised. <laughs> no. uh, there was a twin 60 at, um, uh, at Dominion uh, last year. It's in September. And, uh, and it's the only one where we've got the Cardano car in the victory lane dog on the B post. It wasn't on the hood yet. Cause we were still like, like courting, you know, Hosky, like trying to figure out like what we were going to do or how we we're going to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the only win that we had. And, um, a couple of top fives. Um, definitely, you, we were you know in well, the highlight reel several times. You know, like for good and bad. Um, <laughs> you know, the uh, Martinsville race from last year, we were uh, we had you know, a chunk of debris. The the ballast came out of one of the other cars and smashed into our car. And and you know that was one of the uh, gifs that's around. If you see him like shaking the wheel, he's got this piece stuck underneath the car, and he's trying to figure out what and trying to tell us what's wrong. Like, hey, something's wrong with my steering. And like we lift the hood and and like, dude, there's nothing wrong with your steering. And we can't see because it's under the car, we can't see what's wrong. And it smashed the piece of the frame like down to where like the piece of the frame was like another inch lower than what it would have been. And so it it took many laps before we had it all up and he already climbed out of the car by the time we got a tire back on it, like for it to go out and run again. But it would it wasn't gonna be a hundred percent. We were gonna be so many laps down, you know, it was just like, oh man, why why go tear it up now? You know, it's, it's yeah. Don't ruin the car anymore at that point. Kind of, yeah. Kind of did us in. What's like, uh, is that like one of the worst things? Like what's the craziest thing that's happened in a race? Uh, I mean, I, I can I go back to one where, um, this is pre Trent, you know, this is, uh, taking another customer racing, you know, like kind of in Trent's shoes, kind of the same, same situation, except just, uh, switch the sponsor and the driver. Um, we had a failure from uh, uh, the Chevrolet crate motor went through a phase where they had a metallurgy failure and several of the motors across the country broke like all around the same time, like within like a couple weeks of each other. And the entire oh, wow. front of the engine broke off like crankshaft down into the steering car wrecks. And I have a picture of it somewhere on another phone, but, um, we when the record driver comes to pick the thing up, that's when like the, the piece of the crankshaft like finally fell out of the rest of the car, you know, and I stopped him to take a picture. I'm like, well, we've got to take a picture of this. I mean, like, when have you ever seen the How crankshaft often? actually on the racetrack, man? Like, this is wild. And it just it destroyed the whole front of the motor was just gone. Like it just it disintegrated, you know, it just blew up. And so it, but it was uh, we didn't we didn't realize we were onto something or that it was there was a, like a national problem until we posted the pictures and somebody immediately that was like in Ohio racing was like, dude, this happened to me last night. Like what the hell? Like I, I've never seen this. And somebody else posted it happened to me a week ago. And so it started popping up of the, you know, tracing it back to a foundry issue with the blocks and the, you know, had some, you know, porosity in that, that side of the block. And it, you know, it was its failure point and they just kaboom. 
That's wild. Do you, like, I guess you guys, like, report a lot of that stuff to manufacturers, it's, and I guess you guys are, like, the stress test where they get to <laughs> kind of see what, what the limits are, right? Yeah, at certain times, um, when, and there is really no, like, official reporting or anything. It's it's usually just social media that, that takes care of that, you know. <laughs> um, but in the, uh, in the IMSA series, uh, the manufacturers will use some of those uh, some of those cars for their destruction testing. Like, let's see a uh, connecting rod. Let's see how far it will go as a stock piece in a race car in a race setting, like at a 24 hour race and see how many hours it will actually go. And when it fails and destroys the motor and wrecks the car, they all cheer. Ah, I made it farther than we thought. <laughs> it's perfect for street car use, <laughs> you know, and, and the poor guys on the race team were having to put motor after motor after motor into these things because it's just experimental stuff that the, you know, Mazda going to break. Going, we know it's going to break. We just don't know when. <laughs> but yeah, going, you know, hey, and somebody's so, got to do it. We got to find the limitation to all this stuff, you know, and and actually for real, you're whatever, you know, whatever little uh, Mazda truck motor most likely has the rods in it that were in that prototype just a couple years ago you know, proving that they actually will last, you know, this many hours, this much load, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that, that stuff does happen. It's just usually on the manufacturer side and not on our side. <laughs> it's rare that we get to see something like that where it's, a, you know, where we we stumble upon a foundry issue. That's pretty rare. How, like, I guess it seems like it's a very destructive sport. Like, you know, <laughs> does a car last an entire season or... Well, they can. Uh, it's it's all random. <laughs> they can. <laughs> yeah, if you're I mean, lucky. Uh, if you're lucky. And so, like the Daytona Talladega stuff, um, those bodies were so special. Um, if they survived the wrecks, uh, we would start to call them evolutions. You know, because they would actually it would be like, oh, whoa, it survived. We can make it a little better and a little better and a little better. So they would evolve. And if you had one that finished three or four races in a row, like, oh my god, like it's like you. You're sitting there going, I'm sorry, girl. You're taking her back to the track going, oh, man, you know, it's your number. I know this is your number this time. You're going to be destroyed. And <laughs> usually is, you know, um, I, I want to say after like um, we did a run of probably 15 over uh, several years period. We did like 15 speedway races. And I want to say like nine times that they were in a box. So uh, I guess that's about half. But like. Uh, meaning in a box, meaning that they came back junked. You know, it, it came back. All your parts and pieces are handed to you in a box. Here we found this on the track. <laughs> you know, so yeah, those days are 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 pretty bad. But um, but you build again. You know, and you 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 learn yeah. from whatever you learned that day before it wrecked, and you add it to the new one, and you you build again. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I get a, a lot of the fun is probably the like building the next car and kind of learning what you you know, what you want to do differently from the last car to kind of push it a little bit. Oh, yeah. And your peers, you know, you go to the track and you're eyeballing on, you know, the other fabricator that's that's bringing something that he was trying to one up you or you're trying to all one up this other guy over here that's been faster than you all the whole time. So, yeah, you're you're always considering your opponent is way better than you. And you're you're always having to work harder than your, you know, to, than what you assume they're working on. So. Is there it's one, like, evildoer that, like, wins all the time that everybody, like, gangs up no. against or anything like that? Uh, Is it more I mean, of, like, teams? No, it, it may be years ago and where rules were a lot different. Like, you might have had somebody being able to run away with, with something. and uh, But anymore, it's pretty pretty fair to where, you know, a cycle of people win the race. You know, it's 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 like kind of anybody in the top five or so has got a good shot at it, you know. So you're not really pissy about it i mean usually pissy is some is boneheaded moves you know when somebody's out there and just loses their mind or gets too hot and you know like physically gets too hot and they you know lose it and hit you and you know now it causes a bunch of money and damage and you know everybody's mad and want to fight and you know that's that's a typical saturday night <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna be my next question is how often are people fighting pretty much every every race a or lot. What? a lot to the <laughs> point where here recently um Dale Jr. and Kevin Harvick you know, dragged Z-Max into the, the Cars Tour. is is a, a announcement, you know, making sure that uh, that that series had a title sponsor to, you know, kind of keep the ball moving. You got to have some wax in there to keep everything running. Um, 
and they made an announcement there there will be no fighting in the Z-Max series you know like there's you know uh, it, I guess I don't think it was said as to where you're supposed to take care of it but you know you're supposed to assume <laughs> it's, it's it, it will be taken care of just not here on the track on TV you know so that just came up like in the past week that was part of like their their news thing of, of them launching that that I mean shout out Z-Max yeah, trying to keep like cooler heads on the track for all the advertisers and stuff like that. I mean, it's a professional thing, you know, like it's it's one of the, I mean, yes, the fans definitely want to see, you know, knuckles being thrown. They absolutely want to see that stuff. But like the corporate people, you know, I mean, they're they're they have rules that they've got to follow for, you know, their people, you know, so you have investors, you know, you have rules, you know, so they're they're obviously, you know, catering to that stack. So kudos to them because it's making a clean place for us to to bring our corporate type or our companies you know that are you know branching into this world and going hey well we want to play too and we want to show that we you know we want to play you know clean and not dirty and you know but yeah like definitely it's it's bittersweet you know you 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 inside you want to see the fight too you know but like you don't see anybody get hurt you just you just want to see you know you know somebody get mad about getting taken out or something it's like rightfully yeah. so you should be mad you know like it's no fault of your own sir you know? yeah that makes a lot of sense and so like what are your plans with like bone pool in the future or anything like that do you have any plans coming up or anything like that well nothing big to announce or anything um it's pretty much you know all systems go like um uh, I believe Krista made some upgrades to the pool and, you know, it's, it seems to be really quick and, and we're, you know, we're minting blocks pretty regular. Uh, so everything's rocking on that front. Um, as far as any, no, no real major announcements are working on a, a website. Um, uh, Block Metro, uh, shout out them. They uh, helping me, Potato has been helping me, you know, figure out my website. It's been a nightmare for years <laughs> now and um, pretty much just a drift. I don't know what I'm doing. And um, so uh, so it should be a whole lot better. It should be a, a lot more Web3 friendly where you actually connect your wallet to it. And and, um, and hopefully we get it links us to play games like in our discord where if we're playing like uh, I guess that block, like how many blocks will Bone get this week and we'll give away Hosky tokens. And it's uh, we've been playing that game for a while, but it's kind of been manual and kind of hard to go back scrolling back through. All right. Who voted five and who voted four? And, you know, OK. But it'd be cool to have it like just kind of automated where it's automated, like, you know, where it, you, you dump a bunch of Hosky into like a vending machine and whoever wins is, is eligible to, to, you know, withdraw or whatever. You know, I don't, I don't I'm not sure how he'll build it, but it's something on that front. I'm sure. Really cool. What's like uh, the bone pool mission? What did you say? Well, um, really decentralizing the network. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm, ate up on the idea that we need a decentralized network to 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 be able to vote you know to be able to have you know all these things that we're building we you know we can't give up that that leg of it that seems to be our strength um so any anything that promotes um you know pushing stake to the edges you know like those ideas made sense you know it was a catchphrase from back then but if you went and looked into it you know you really saw how uh you know, pledge would help the Sybil attacks and and having, you know, more and more delegation out, you know, on the smaller ends, you know, flattened out that curve to where everything was was even across the board or more even, you know, of course, nothing perfect. Um, so, yeah, that's that was probably uh, Krista and I, you know, seeing that as, OK, this is noble. You know, this is something to go after. This is a reason to have a business or what, you know, like like to be part of something, you know, that's so um really truthfully that's that that is the that is the goal of it is decentralizing the network um along the way uh we uh if i haven't I've, i know i haven't mentioned in this podcast um my business partner krista uh has been a friend for a long time uh in the motorsports world uh, she's a driver in scca uh, it's the e46 series that the whole se the whole entire series is nothing but bmw 46 you know class cars um so we had worked around each other in different circles and then uh, just a, a good healthy chance meeting of, of her needing, you know, welding services done. Uh, I sparked the conversation because I knew someone in her family was was IT related. And uh, and I had only assumed, you know, that it was her husband, uh, you know, because 
she's the one with greasy fingers and her fire suit tied around her waist and, you know, pulling the engine out of the car and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm sorry. Stereotypically, I figured it was her husband that was standing there with the clean shirt on, not getting involved, you know? Um, and then as I was asking her, she's kind of like looking at me like, is, is this a joke? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I just assumed somebody in your family was IT. She's like, no, it's me. <laughs> She's like, I've I've been a server security specialist for over 20 years, and I've like fell over. You know, I was like, oh dear God. Like, do you realize like we were meant to meet each other right now? Like, this is great. You know, so um, yeah. So she she bit on really quick to it. You know, like what was what you know what we were laying out and what Cardano could do and. It was probably a month or two later, she got back to me like, hey, how serious are you on this? You know, and I'm like, I've got the coins. If you can pull it off, you know, if you can run the server, then, you know, then let's get together and do this, you know. And she's like, OK, let's let's we'll start slow. And we're this and that. And the ITN was coming up. And so we we got into the ITN as delegators and we played there. And then when it launched, you know, she started her mainnet thing. And we I think it was Epoch 254 was our, you know, our maiden voyage thing, sho shoving off. And um and we've just been rocking since then, you know, just trying to chug along. And of course, shout out to Hosky. I mean, without that, the rug pool thing, we'd have still been down in like no delegation land, uh, most likely, you know. Um, so that catapulted the brand and the the idea and, and was, you know, got the car further out there. I mean, the car was already out there. We were already doing the Cardano race team. Um, and that was, you know, like the best we could do. But, you know, Hosky blasting it, you know, to his 60,000 followers or 90,000 wallets and all that, you know, that really amped it up. And, you know, and, and good for everyone else that got involved in, in you know, advertising on the car, because, again, like they wouldn't have got the, the you know, that recognition either. You know, it would have been hard for, you know, kudos to Hosky for kind of paving the way on that, or taking the chance on us. Absolutely. That's it is really cool what he's done for the community and. And even so, what, what he's done for the car, that's a really cool story to to hear. Like, what are, you know, for the people listening, like, when it comes to sponsoring the car, like, what are the sponsorships that are out there that you guys are looking for? How do people get in contact with you about that? Um, you know, how does that normally work or go about happening? Really Im impromptu. You know, DM is fine. You know, if you're, you got a, a project that you're looking to blast and, we, it doesn't have to be Cardano, you know, I mean, like, obviously we're open to cross chain things and everything, but like, I doubt an Ethereum project wants to blast in the Cardano car, you know, you know seriously, you know, but, but to our, our V chain friends, our, our Ergo friends, you know, that kind of like seem seemingly we align on a lot of things, you know, with, with the tech, um, like it's definitely open to, to anyone that wants to, you know, like, you know, push for, you know, web three you know push for all, all these ideas you know push for doing it decentralized push for you know if anyone's behind that well then yeah we we want you you know we want to blast your, you know, your logo we want to promote that also um uh cost wise like something what hosky did that's two thousand dollars of per race to sponsor the hood um and discoin come along recently it's a thousand dollars to sponsor the tail um, so those are like the biggest parts of the car that, you know, that we have like for, for making the biggest splash. Um, the logos in between, uh, really, I got I got in trouble <laughs> kind of the, um, the car owner really didn't like the idea of a splotchy car. That if we were going to do many different logos, then we needed to go and take the time to develop a, a design, a wrap that that made all of it look good and helped all those companies look good and all that. And that was definitely a, a, an idea early on until we saw well, what it would cost to, to have all that kind of stuff done was just another fee that added up that like, well, man, who's going to pay for that part? You know, like, wait a minute, you know, we we've stripped this down to be as cheap as we can. But damn, and we are, you know, we can't do it that way. So um, the idea of we had to put a limit on um, kind of the size of the sticker and the, the cost. So seven hundred and fifty dollars is about the cost of a set of tires. And this was what was said was that's about the limit. If, if they want to sponsor a set of tires that will blast their logo pretty good sized on it. And, you know, here we go. Um, but anything below that, like, man, you guys probably need to pool together and, you know, and, and buy a set of tires together and put one logo on it, you know, rather than a bunch of your little ones, you know, at least, you know, that was his wishes as being the car owner. And I totally have to respect it. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Our, like tires, like the most kind of expended thing in a race, you would say probably, like the, 
Yeah, I'd say, I mean, because you, you need a couple sets to go to the track anyway. And if, if it's going to be a two tire, if it's going to be two sets of tires during the race, well, you need a third set to have during the practice. So those races are, are pretty expensive, especially now add the barns have two cars they're fielding, you know. So, you know, that that bill is quite high on the tire thing. You know, they're, they're spending five grand on tires, like, you know, right? Just no one going to the track, they've got that bill, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. And fuel's 13 bucks a gallon, and both of them need 20 gallons. And, you know, we'll, we'll burn 10 gallons at least during practice, and then another 20 gallons during the race or, or more this time. And we probably burned almost 40 gallons in that 250. Like, so it was, a, you know, it's, it's expensive, you know. It's an expensive hobby. Yeah. Job, yeah. career. That's wild. I mean, and, and say, luckily, we have businesses and parents that want to see their kids do well and they want to go out and find it, the motorsports industry professionals and grab them and bring them to a short track and say, hey, you know, do all the things you were doing at that big money team and do it for us. <laughs> Make our kid look good, you know. And that's the idea. And so over the past dozen years, I'd say the short track world got really competitive because a lot of the bigger teams were having trouble finding the money because, you know, the economy going to shit. And a lot of the the um, shops would shut down or minimize team, minimize jobs. Um, and so that would leave people in limbo or, you know, people having to decide, OK, do I pack up and, you know, leave my dream and go back to, you know, working a heat and an air job or, you know, do I stay in this mecca for racing and try to continue racing, it's definitely a, a real thing for a lot of people. So the short track, there's several different short track uh, genres. And so in this Southeastern area, it kind of employs a lot of people and thousands of people are, are really employed by uh, just a, using the barns as an example, you know, a, a family that enjoys racing. They, they know where their kids are on Saturday night. They don't have to worry about them out, you know, doing, you know, bad stuff they're probably now they're they're trained athletes you know they're going after you know trying to make themselves stronger and you know so it's it's definitely um you know not a bad avenue for the the families that have the means you know um it's I mean, and we we can see with that with the barns they continually bring in their friends and neighbors and use it as a kind of a little party a little you know like picnic or get together or something where they've got a nice trailer to to stand on top of and watch the races you know while it's going and 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 they're jumping up and down and cheering for the kids, you know, like they're they're enjoying their themselves at the races. So it's it's great to see that kind of stuff. And and again, it's not just that family. You can kind of times this by twenty and thirty as you look, you know, down pit road, you see that happening over and over. I love that. That's a great story. Like I never really thought about like the economy built around racing and how many jobs it provides and stuff like that. Like not just on the track, but all the engineering and you know tires and parts and all that stuff behind it i never really thought about that so that's really cool yeah, Best i mean way for rednecks in circles right we're just 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 a bunch of hillbillies running around in circles <laughs> Mario, you know <laughs> that's funny and it's really cool how like you kind of like get community out of it it's like saturday night thing for the community to get together and party and uh you know have some fun like you said know where your kids are and uh, getting into getting into some fun activities and stuff like that. That's really cool. How how do you want like most people if they want to reach out to sponsor the car? Is it through Twitter DMs? Is that the the best yeah. route? Yeah, Twitter is probably easier. Um, uh, any any way that that um, if you see me on Spaces, you know, I mean, I'm usually in several different Cardano spaces all the time. Um, they really, I mean, I think I'm easy to get a hold of. I mean, I'm on Discord. Um, I mean, I don't really haven't done Facebook much, but, you know, you know but, um, yeah, I mean, Twitter DM is probably the easiest thing. Well, it's been a pleasure, like, honestly, for uh, a rookie podcaster, you've certainly done it like an expert today. Any, cool. like, right. final thoughts for anybody watching or anything like that? Anything you want to end with? Yeah, steak with SPOs. <laughs> there you go. Steak with bone pool. <laughs> okay. I, I appreciate the time greg it's been it's been a good one and uh we'll have to have you guys back on as the season kicks off in the spring and hope to see you guys at rare evo and thank you thanks so much yeah